second official day here at Jurassi. I woke up really early. It's good because I, I'll just go through the feedback that I got yesterday. Around now, I'll head to the barn, have some breakfast, and then start the group greeting session of the day. Uh, we're here with Nova. How this thing started, how you started teaching here at Jurassi? I was a resident at the Jurassi Resident Artist Program in Woodside, California in 2002. And what that means is it's an artist colony, so I came for a four-week residency just to write. A, a year or more had passed and Margot Knight, the director of Jurassi, uh, contacted me and she said, you know, I'm thinking of trying to do a workshop program. Would you like to be the first, you know, an experimental workshop to see if it would work out? I had done some teaching before, mm -hmm. but never in a, you know, like a week-long retreat setting. I got this opportunity and I thought, how could I possibly pass this up? Mm -hmm. I did the first workshop in, because uh, this was last year. We got so many applicants that we were able to have two sessions. So we had one in February and one in June. Mm -hmm. And it became so popular that we're having another one right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we expected Margot and I to have such a great response. It was a thrill with that, but also mm -hmm. a thrill that I, I enjoyed doing it so much. So it was like this accidental wonderful thing that happened. happened. What you liked most about teaching this workshop, and maybe not just this workshop, but like teaching in general? I didn't originally think I would teach writing. I thought I was too shy. So I started teaching online first and I really loved connecting with writers and helping writers, you know, find the best way to tell their story. So when I had the opportunity to teach in person, I, it's even more so. It's like you connect even more with fellow writers, really being able to speak to each other because we're both, you know, we're both novelists. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not like an editor and a writer working together. It's a different dynamic when I yeah. think it's two writers mm -hmm. working together. What I love about this week and this workshop in particular is just we have this great, you know, this little community that gets together and we're, we're sharing with each other, being generous with each other. I'm, you know, giving what I can to these writers, but I'm also gaining so much. I'm learning from all these really smart people who are you know talking about each other's novels and digging in deep to writing and I, I find it really inspiring mm -hmm. for my own writing and really rewarding as as a teacher and as a as a person now I'm gonna ask you some more craft oriented um, questions uh, especially related to your new novel the walls around us one thing that I really like about that book was V how do you manage to make such an unlikable character and you you make your reader care. I too connected with V. You know, I've always been ambitious as a writer. I completely understood her ambition to be like a famous dancer. Writing an unlikable character like that, you have to find the pieces of humanity in that person and bring it out. Maybe they wouldn't do the same things, but at the same time you can see a, a bit of a mirror and you and I feel like even, you know, even villains mm -hmm. have some humanity in them and they have something that we can connect to and we can understand. It's a dual POV story. Mm -hmm. They have very different voices by their thought process and the way they observe the world you can tell when each one of them is, is talking but at the same time you manage to keep the same writing style throughout the novel like so how do you manage to keep them different and at the same time keep the style the writing consistent and the tone and everything else consistent. There's two different things when you talk about voice. There's the voice of the character and then there's the voice of the author. And I think of my own books, I think that even when, even if they're told by different first person narrators, because all my books have different narrators, I want them to feel like my books. The kind of observations that I might have or how deeply I would go into a character or the kind of darkness I want to explore. When I was working on the two voices, it was really important to differentiate V um, the dancer and Amber, the girl who's incar incarcerated in um, juvenile detention center, and really have them be separate characters but feel like the same story. In terms of separating their voices, I'd have a list on my wall of like things that V was allowed to do. Like V was allowed to use slang and she could have like casual language, and Amber, she could have a lot of similes and she could have like deep, deep thoughts and she could, you know, use semicolons. I mean, down to the punctuation. <laughs> oh, if one slipped into the other, I would try to correct it. But in terms of how deep I was going with the story mm -hmm. and 
and where the story was touching on, it was the same. It was the same road. So there was something the same, and then something very, very different for each of the voices. The atmosphere in that book is almost a character of its own. It's just so consistent and so good. And I was wondering, like, do you have any techniques to achieve that, or is more like an organic process? You're just in that mindset and just come through. At least for me, I have to really immerse myself.、It、can be hard, you know, because writing a novel takes a really long time, and you're not in the same mood the whole time that you're、mm-hmm. writing. So I would have to kind of like replicate the mood for certain characters, and certain chapters have certain songs. I have like、mm-hmm. a playlist. I would always play the same song on loop, on loop, on loop, and it would bring up a certain emotion. There were times when I found too much distraction. It's like h- hilarious to say this is like a writing <laughs> method. I made like a tent. <laughs> In my bedroom, over the desk,、okay. so it was like a kind of like a cocoon、uh-huh. to keep me completely like focused in on you know keeping this mood. Hard to write like a like a creepy. Ghost story when it's this beautiful. We're in a beautiful. It's a beautiful sunny day right now. I had to try and keep the the mood around me consistent as I was writing. I used,、um, you know, going back and trying to keep a consistency by reading back something that I felt was working, and then reading that before writing something else to try and have that feeling follow through as I'm、mm-hmm. writing. But you know, whatever works, whatever helps keep you in the same in the same kind of consistent feeling. So when you're writing, and I look. Lo- Know you like to write dark novels. So when you're writing a novel like that, do you feel it kind of、uh, reflects in your life? Like because you have to put yourself in a dark spot constantly. You can get really deep, a little too deep in a novel, especially when it's a really hard part of the book. There's the scene with V. I don't want to spoil anything, but it, it takes place in the smoking tunnel outside the theater, and it's a very intense scene. Yeah, I had a hard time getting out. I was I was kind of surprised that I went there, and I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> Heaviness of something can really settle on you. Sometimes you just have to, you know, shake that off, go for a walk. Watch, you know, watch a bunch of television that has nothing whatsoever to do with your book. We get very connected to our characters and、yeah. our stories. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Noah. Thank you so、yeah. much for doing this. Thank you、okay. so much. Thank you for having me. I'm going to、uh, Stephanie's lecture now, and then after that, we're going to have a Q Q and A, I think, and then I'll let you know how that goes.、I、just came back from a lecture and Q and A with Stephanie. Why I'm moving the chair while I'm filming this doesn't sound like a good idea. She has a degree in、uh, psychology. Her approach to creating characters was really interesting. She explained the difference between empathy, sympathy, and pity. Empathy is when you can feel what the other person is feeling. Sympathy is when you feel sorry. For that person, pity is when you feel sorry for that person, but you consider yourself to be in a higher position than the other person. When you are creating characters, what you need actually is empathy. Writers tend to show that your character has suffered in the past. That really will not make your character compelling. Your reader needs to understand. How your character feels and、uh, understand how you, why your character does the thing he does. Understand how your character perceives the world. Show your character's observations of the world, and that's what is going to draw your reader in, so your reader can feel what your character feels. The fact that he has or not suffered in the past, you may just feel. Sorry for the character, but you may not care about that character. To establish that connection, you need the reader to feel what your character is feeling. The other thing that she also talked about: there's three things:、uh, what the person is thinking, what the person is actually doing, and what the person is feeling. And those three things normally they are not the same. Showing those、uh, different layers, the,、uh, it's good to show contrast and show that your character. It's complex. There was also something interesting that she said about、uh, that you can connect with any kind of emotion. Normally, you associate we can connect only with good emotions, but you can also connect with bad emotions. For instance,、um, jealousy, anger. As long as you can see yourself feeling the same thing as this other person is feeling, and we all have felt jealousy or anger、uh, before, so、uh, that. That can also help you connect with the character. I remember when I was reading the walls around us with the character V. The reason why I connect with her is because I understood where she was coming from. She was feeling jealous of her friend, and she struggled so much. She had she had to put so much effort into being a good dancer, but she was always going to be best friend's shadow. The fact that I understand how she's feeling and I can. 
tap into that really helped me um, well connect with V despite that she's a horrible person. If you read Show Me Strange, you know it's a book that is really well crafted. You know throughout the book that something's off. She said that what she did to accomplish that is just basically that she was always, always trying to speak the characters through. That book stood from the perspective of the character in the present and the character in the past. So he was always telling the truth uh, no matter when it just happened that this truth changed so i find that a really interesting approach it kind of like simplifies something that you could you know overthink tonight i'm gonna read from my mid grade novel that always makes me feel a little bit nervous i don't like reading or doing anything in public <laughs> If you like this video, please hit the like button here below. Please subscribe and um, let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know what you think of this workshop. I couldn't hope for more and I had high expectations for this workshop. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Yeah.